In this lesson, you will understand lateral analysis, the effects of adding bracing, and understand stability. Go ahead and open up the stability analysis model. In this video, as well as talking about lateral analysis, we would also look at the considerations around the stability of structures. Let's review the loads on this moment frame. I'm going to begin by selecting the wind load, and we can see here that we have a one kip load and the two columns are in fact pinned. On the standard toolbar, select calculations. The calculations have now run with no errors. Let's now take a look at the moment diagram. On the standard toolbar, select the layouts pull down and then go ahead and select results. In the diagrams dialog box, select the deformation tab and then select deformation and then select apply. So here we're currently looking at the dead load. So let's ensure on the load pull down that we've selected wind load one. In the diagrams dialog box, let's go ahead and select normalize. And I'm just going to increase the magnitude of this. So I'll select deformation in structural scale. And for the scale factor, I'll type in 500 and select apply. Notice that the structure is rotating at the base of the columns due to the pin supports. We have a tension on top of the beam here, and of course on the bottom of the beam here. Let's now go ahead and look at the moment diagram. In the diagrams dialog, let's go ahead and select the NTM tab, and then go ahead and select MY moment. We'll click apply to view the moment. You can see that the moments look correct. It all makes sense and follows our intuition. Let's now take a look at the reactions. If we're pushing the frame one kip to the right on this joint and the frame is symmetrical, then we'd expect to see half a kip reaction in the negative x direction on both of the column joints. To see this in the diagrams dialog box, let's go ahead and select the reactions tab. And on the reactions tab, we'll select FX. We'd also enable descriptions and select apply. You can now see the reactions are as expected, negative 0.5 kips. So here you can see that the moment is shown as nine kip feet. If you want to check this, then we can simply multiply the reaction by the height of the column. On the standard toolbar, select the tools command. On the tools toolbar, click dimension lines. We will add a dimension to check the height of the column. In the Dimension Lines dialog, click Close. We will now check the calculation. On the Tools toolbar, select Calculator. Let's now multiply 0.5 by the height of the column, which was 18. And of course, that gives us a result of 9. This is intuitive with what we expected, and the results are starting to make sense. Next, we'll take a look at Stability. Before we can look into stability, we will need to change the release conditions on the beam. You may remember that the beam is fixed at both ends. We will now amend this to set the pin condition to each end. On the standard toolbar, select the layouts pull down and then click structural model and then select start. Let's now go ahead and select the beam. And on the object inspector, you'll note here under releases, we'll set this to pinned pinned. Obviously here, that means we're going to have to recalculate the uh, solution. So we'll just select yes here. To check that the releases have been correctly set, we will switch on the display of the releases. Let's select the view menu and on the view menu, we'll select display. In the display dialog box, let's select model. And here you can see that we have releases, we'll expand releases and we'll switch on both the symbols and the codes. Let's select OK. You can now see that we have our pinned condition at the start and the end of the beam. Of course, now we'll have to refresh our calculations. So on the standard toolbar, let's go ahead and select calculations. And notice now we get an instability error. This is because the system is no longer stable. All the joints are pinned. In the calculation messages dialog, you can see the instability error and also the node that's causing the instability. Let's go ahead and select close to the calculation messages. 
I can see that the moment diagram is now showing me a simple span beam, which makes sense as we've released the fixed conditions. Here, of course, we're looking at the dead load. So on the load's pull down, I'm going to go ahead here and select wind. The deflected shape shows us that the frame has actually fallen over due to the instability. And notice here there's negligible reactions on the columns. Now, of course, to make the structural system stable, we would add a brace across the diagonals. On the structure model toolbar, let's go ahead and select bars. We'll click on the browse button to browse to our section. Here we're going to just use a simple tube section, so we'll select tube. The family that we want is TS. And then from the selection here, we'll just simply go ahead and choose a six inch by six inch by quarter thick. Before we add that, let's go ahead and select our material as well. We'll make sure we've got the correct material selected. So we're going to use A99250. And then we can add. And finally click close. I'll now go ahead and add my brace in. So I'll click the base of the column here, up to the joints here and then close down the bars dialog. So we're now ready to rerun the calculations. So on the standard toolbar, select calculations. The calculations have now run. Notice that we didn't receive any errors. Let's now take a look at the results. On the standard toolbar, select the layouts pull down. We'll choose results and then select results. Let's just make sure that the wind load is selected in here. So if we apply the one kip load at this joint, there should be an axial load on the top member and then the diagonal brace will then pull this back the other way. We can see here that we have a negative one kip force in the X direction and at joint two, there's no force at all. This also makes sense because it's pinned at the bottom and released at the top. So there's no lateral stiffness in bar number two. Let's now take a look at the result diagrams and start to consider what they're showing us. So in the diagrams dialog, let's select NTM. And here I'm going to select FX force and we'll select apply. What we can see is that the bar at the top is carrying a positive compression force and the diagonal member, it's negative. We can also see that we have an axial force in this column here due to the one kip load. That force would be the proportional ratio of one kip times 18 feet divided by 30 feet. To calculate the force in this member, we can take the lateral force times the height of the member divided by its length. On the standard toolbar, let's go ahead and select tools. In the tools toolbar, let's go ahead and select calculator. So here we'll start off by taking our one kip and we'll multiply that by the height, which is 18. And then we'll divide that by 30. And if we click equals here, you can see here that we have 0 0.6 axial force. We can easily show this in robot just by simply looking at the reactions on the column bases. In the diagrams dialog, let's scroll across to reactions. And here we'll select FZ for our reaction. We'll select apply. We can see here that we have 0.6 kips and there should be an uplift on the other column to balance out the system. Let's now close down the tools. We could also calculate the force in this bar here. This is a false triangle. We have one kip going along the axes of the beam and 0.6 kips on the column. If we squared 0.6 and then added it to the square of one and then get the root of the sum of the squares, we would know the tension force in this member. So to recap, as we add hinges, there could be stability issues from the frame. These can be addressed with braces or other techniques. We should always validate the model results with simple calculations to check that we are getting sensible results. Okay, that concludes this video.